Good evening and welcome to Pray Vote Stand. I'm your host, Tony Perkins, President, Family Research Council. Tonight, is the Supreme Court a heartbeat away from overturning Roe v. Wade? Could a law in Texas and the 15-week abortion limit in Mississippi finally spill the end of the abortion on demand that we've seen in this country? This week, as the Supreme Court heard its first of two major abortion cases this term, there's more speculation than ever that the days of Roe v. Wade are numbered. We'll talk with the Arkansas Attorney General Leslie Rutledge about what the cases mean and whether either one could end this human rights crisis for good. Then, what would a post-Roe America actually look like? If the court overturns the injustice of 1973, is it the end of legal abortions or the start of a new debate? We'll talk with Abby Johnson on the ground in Texas about the sudden demand for abortion alternatives and why more women are responding to her compassionate outreach than ever. Could it be a preview of things to come? And finally, is the church ready for a post row world? Roland Warren, CEO of CareNet, shares what congregations should be doing now to ramp up their outreach to mothers. But first. The court is now sitting. God save the United States and this honorable court. What you just heard was a gavel, but it might as well have been a starting gun to the most important Supreme Court term in more than a generation. In a matter of four weeks, the justices will hear the most direct challenge to Roe v. Wade in decades, setting the stage for a brand new chapter in the fight for the unborn. It began Monday with the Texas Heartbeat Bill, one of the most unique laws ever written. America's highest court took the unusual step of wading into the complicated legal questions surrounding it. Can Texas or any other state structure a law the, the way that they did? We'll find out. In the meantime, the heart of the entire abortion debate will hinge on the December 1st court hearing, the moment many believe pro-lifers have been waiting for, a challenge to the constitutionality of the infamous Roe v. Wade. For the first time in 50 years, Democrats are in a state of panic over Mississippi's 15-week abortion ban. Could this be the case that finally topples Roe? And what would happen to abortion if it were? If the court says we're overturning Roe versus Wade, it's up to the states to decide what to do. A number of people are under the impression that if Roe falls, abortion will automatically be illegal in all 50 states. But they're wrong. Abortion would simply be taken out of the hands of the court and return to the state legislatures where it belongs. For the left, that means no more hiding behind activist judges, no more finding rights hidden in the shadows of the Constitution. What would that look like? Well, a, click, a quick glance at what's been happening in states across America over the last decade is a good preview. As pro-life Americans responded to the extreme pro-abortion policies of the Obama-Biden administration, new conservative majorities in state legislatures across the nation began passing a record number of pro-life laws, ranging from requiring medical care to babies who survive abortions to measures that would outlaw abortion once Roe falls. What we've seen is a healthy and sometimes contentious debate over an issue that has seen few rivals in terms of its impact on our nation. And that's what's been missing for too long in Roe v. Wade, along with 60 million souls. It wasn't just a ruling that made us one of the most extreme countries on the planet when it comes to abortion. It also short-circuited the tough conversations that Americans need to have, the debate over this issue, conversations about who we are as a nation and who we want to be. Even the Washington Post admitted that it's time to, quote, let Roe go. The only way to lower the temperature on abortion is to, quote, throw the matter back to the states so that people can argue about it and confront the hard questions that abortion entails. That would give most people a law they could live with, end quote. In some places, those laws have already been decided. More than 20 states already have constitutional amendments, limits, or trigger laws on the books 
that would outlaw abortion, the second row is struck down. Another five have limits like Texas that will activate when the time comes. For the rest of America, it would be back to square one on the issue. The other side is already preparing for that day. Question is, are we? While the left sets in motion a massive battle plan for state elections, boycotts, and corporate campaigns, we need to be even more intentional. Are we praying? Are we voting? Are we standing on this biblical truth and reaching out with compassion to pregnant mothers? Winning the legal challenge is important, but it won't mean much without the spiritual commitment to sustain it. Pro-lifers have spent decades softening hearts, showing the humanity of the womb, and extending true compassion to women. Now is the time to carry that hard work over the finish line. Don't quit now. Join me as we pray for the court and for the end of abortion in America. Father, we thank you for our time together tonight in this edition of Pray, Vote, Stand. And collectively across this nation, we pray for our Supreme Court as they will take up this issue of Roe v. Wade and the constitutionality of this open season on the unborn that has led to over 60 million abortions in this country. Lord, once again, we ask you to forgive us. But Lord, forgiveness and repentance go hand in hand. May we turn and go the other direction. I pray for our court that they would make the right decision on December 1st. But Lord, I pray also that we would be prepared as the church to fill the voids, to step in and do the ministry and to help those who find themselves in need. Lord, be with us tonight, guide our conversation. May it be pleasing to you, we pray in Jesus' name, amen.